With me today is one of America's top casting directors. Uh, David O'Connor is joining me, uh, based right here in Chicago. And David, welcome to the show. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. First thing I want to ask you is probably what a lot of people want to know or don't know. What is a casting director? What is your job in the television industry? <laughs> well, a casting director typically gets hired on by a client, whether it's a studio, network, production company, or ad agency, to find people to fit their project project. Uh, as a casting director doesn't represent somebody, so they're an objective view on who's the best choices for the roles. So in other words, you are looking in layman's terms for that right face, that right person that would bring that part to life, correct? Yes, uh, based on many, many different criteria that comes through. Mm -hmm. Could be based on looks or it could be based on time. And you've been doing this, I know, for a good number of years. How did you get started in this business? What drew you into it? Uh, Got started in casting because I didn't know how to work with actors. Oh. <laughs> um, I was writing and I was learning how to direct and create projects and I was moving in a more film and television director, writer category, I guess, as a career and got sidetracked by casting because I, I didn't know it. My education wasn't leading down that path. I went to the Art Institute of Chicago and studied art and filmmaking mm. and and drawing that certainly wasn't really involving talent unless it was drawing a model or something. So I got into casting because the opportunity was literally, hey, build the chops on working with talent. So when you get behind the camera as a director, you can have more to build mm -hmm. from. Mm -hmm. Now, when the talent comes to see you, what exactly do you do? Is it sort of a firing squad in front of you? Do you sit there like this <laughs> from head to toe? What qualities are you looking for? An individual. Well, it's not necessarily American Idol type <laughs> thing, although we've done open calls where it's that kind of panel thing. But typically, when you're coming in, it's based on a specific role for a specific project. So we're coming in, you've got a script or you have direction on what to do, and you need to come in prepared first, uh, know what the project is about, know the details about the project, whether it's union, non union, what the rates are, are you available for the shoot, um, and then know the characters in the script. And know them, and then be prepared to change. Mm -hmm. Now let me ask you this, because somebody told me casting directors have a very keen eye. Mm -hmm. When somebody walks in your door, do you know immediately if they have it or not? No, oddly enough, sometimes there, I mean, there's some pretty obvious mm -hmm. things that come that are probably instinctual after you're doing it for so many years, but you don't get into, uh, well, you don't want to open yourself up to a, uh, making the wrong choice. So there, of course, everyone has preconceived judgments when they first meet somebody, whether it's dating somebody or whether it's on the <laughs> side. So when they come in, I've always kept that open a bit. Um, I know if I know the actor well enough, I already know somewhat the path that they're gonna go down. Uh, so we can help them before they actually get started with some notes. However, I've been surprised by People completely. Sometimes it's a real person who comes in who's just a natural. Sometimes it's an actor who I didn't think could ever do any kind of comedy, mm -hmm. and you say action, and they are funnier than anything. Mm -hmm. um, but it's 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 stuff. Look wise, it's pretty obvious. Mm -hmm. Which reminds me, it's so funny you brought that up. I just read an article the other day about uh, Ray Romano mm -hmm. uh, when he got hired for Everybody Loves Raymond. The first thing the cast thought is this show's going to go nowhere. With him. <laughs> And look what happened. So sometimes it's not always just out there then. No, talent can absolutely win out. Talent can make a series. Talent can make a commercial. I'm, I'm working on a project now that they were dead set on a certain look. And we started throwing in just some talented people who were outside of that. And they're going that route more than it is based on the look. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, people have their visions, but then it's... Mm -hmm. Our job, hopefully, to add to right. it. Now, when they come in, um, how is the audition? Obviously, there's a script. I take it it's not the full script of the show or whatever. It's just they run lines for you, or what do they do? Uh, if it's a television project or a film project, you're getting scenes. Mm -hmm. You scenes. sides um, picked out. Sometimes just one. Sometimes it's multiple, depending on the character's arc and progression, in case you need to see more. Uh, otherwise, uh, if it's a commercial, it's pretty straightforward. There's a script. Sometimes... The hardest roles are roles that are MOS or without sound. 
uh, that people just have to act and give reactions to. Oh, I'm eating a burger or I'm having mm -hmm. a conversation in the background mm -hmm. I need to look happy or I'm opening a door. Oddly enough, some of those are very difficult to do for people because mm -hmm. they tend not to just be natural. They tend to go large and mm -hmm. are out there. And they also come in thinking, oh, it's simple, but it's not. Mm -hmm. Imagine we're doing a, a car that, uh, a car commercial and you are going into a pit stop and suddenly there's all these people around you doing different things. You have to use your imagination, whether it's improvisation or just common sense with, oh, they're jacking the car up or mm -hmm. I have to react to somebody coming around. There's a world around me. And a lot of times an actor doesn't think about that world. They think about, oh, well, I don't have any lines, so I don't really have to worry about it. But when you say, okay, this is it, mm -hmm. do it, they're like, oh, I didn't know I had to do all this stuff. Oh. I'm, I'm the guy who's just standing next to his friend. No, you're not just standing. Has anyone there. ever freaked out on you when they auditioned? Um, oh, God, yeah. I mean, after <laughs> doing it for a long time. Uh, they could freak out on themselves more. They could be, um, I think when people are upset or with an audition, they are in a place where they have come in unprepared mm -hmm. or they've come in overprepared and it may be not what the client wants. Mm -hmm. So your suggestion for someone out there, would you say it is wise to always come prepared or don't over prepare yourself, meaning to the point you're near a nervous breakdown <laughs> for this? I think you should be extremely familiar with what the project is mm -hmm. and what the scripts are and the characters. Uh, and if it's copy or their lines, you should have it down as much as you can because the person in back of you will. And the people who shine the most are people who are very comfortable with the character. And for you to be comfortable in the character, you're not worried about, did I say the wrong line or did I do that? However, you need to be adaptable to what comes through. Film and TV is a different type of audition. It's mm -hmm. much more, I mean, sometimes if it's improvisation based, you're really going off. But if it's more um, dramatic in nature, you're sticking to the script much more. Mm -hmm. Commercially, it may be sticking to the script, but they want to see what an actor can bring to it. They really, mm -hmm. the point of- In other words, it's bringing the script to life is really it's what bringing it's bringing the about. script to life, but it's also making um, you as a performer stand out. Anybody can come in and do the lines. Mm -hmm. It's what are you going to do with the character and make that a character. Right. Just like uh, if you're familiar with soap operas, I mean, those actors do everything. They cry, they scream, they go out of their mind. Yes. They, they do everything to bring that script to life. And naturally, the script is nothing but words, but it is the actor that brings it to life. It's uh, What's incredible about it, I and mean, you could bring soap opera, there's a certain type of acting that goes along with soap mm -hmm. opera. And there's a certain type of acting that goes around with every television series there is, it's very difficult for an actor to know what that is unless it's on the air, unless mm -hmm. they have the reference point. Grey's Anatomy, everybody kind of knows as an actor, this is where they're going, this is how mm -hmm. they speak, they have a certain cadence, they have a certain look to it, so they can prepare for that. But when it's a new show or a new commercial campaign or a project that is under development, you don't know. So they're developing it around the actors who are coming through. Mm -hmm. Now when the actors come to see you, do they immediately find out if they won the role or is it kind of by thank you we'll be in touch or uh, and then it, obviously you contact the agents they book them they got the role how does all that work um well it's extremely extremely rare when somebody walks out in an audition and we're saying you're booked for it mm -hmm. uh, typically there's a callback so the first audition mm -hmm. we're we're getting them in we're reading them through the lines we're uh, getting it presentable to show the client, the director, the creatives. Um, so the callback is a little more technical than the first audition. The callback is much more. Hopefully the director will get involved or they've given us very specific notes mm -hmm. to work with them. And then it's going to go through the procedure. Again, television, film, advertising, everyone has their different procedure and mm -hmm. protocols for how it goes through the structure. Sometimes commercial um, okaying or saying, okay, we're ready to book those select people goes through a process because there's always somebody higher up on the food chain mm -hmm. and sometimes on the the larger campaigns they want to go to the head person mm -hmm. how have uh, commercials and casting in particular changed over the years since you've been doing it i mean you know there is today more animation you know i come kind of come from back in the day when mikey did the life commercial right. Right. well today there's more graphic snappy music i mean has it changed for you in terms of casting even it changes rapidly the business side changes much more than it ever did because technology, everything makes it faster. Mm -hmm. 
um, but advertising with who they're going after changes along the lines of our culture and changes mm -hmm. along the lines of film and television, which if it's advertising based, they're kind of using that as reference. Um, and it's, it's changed on, it could be politics, it could be racial, mm -hmm. it could be, you know, when I started, there wasn't like, oh, ethnically ambiguous. Mm -hmm. Like that's a usual term that mm -hmm. it's used now. But 25 years ago, it's like, oh no, well, we want, you know, we want black, we want white, we mm -hmm. want Asian. That was very specific, mm -hmm. but there's so much more crossover now. Mm -hmm. It's a great melting pot and it's wonderful that more people are being considered mm -hmm. uh, across the lines. Mm -hmm. How many people, uh, this may be a card for you to answer, but do you know roughly how many people you cast a year in different projects? Um, I, it, it could be as many as 500. Mm -hmm. Like you're depending on what it and is. when they come see you, I take it they see you or do they see assistants? No, they're or? saying assistants or other casting directors Assist are in there. Okay, so alert. then are you the final say? If somebody say your assistants like this guy, then do they say, David, we want you to take a look no, at this? No, I, I it, we're or definitely you trust a team. Them implicitly. We're a team. We're involved mm -hmm. from the moment the job comes in to the moment it's booked. Mm -hmm. So it, we have it arranged here so everyone can kind of move in and take over whenever they need to take over. Every office works differently. If it's only a one-person shop, they may not, but we have a larger operation, uh, which is great because we get a lot more input and a lot more voices to challenge, to say, oh, no, I don't think they're right for this one. I think they're great for this one. Their look has changed. And for one person to keep track of that, it's extremely difficult, even with technology. We're able to you know, go back on auditions that we've done for some people over the last five years. So mm -hmm. we'll know exactly what they look like. Mm -hmm. um, so look-wise, performance-wise is always changing. People are getting better at their craft. Hopefully mm -hmm. they're getting better. So it is all about the look. I mean, would it be that technical that it's looks, height, weight, eye color? Does it get that technical? It, depending on what it is, we could be doing a, a print campaign, for example, that needs beautiful eyes. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing when you look at something and you look, oh my God, that's a beautiful person, a really handsome man. And then you look at just their eyes like, oh, they're really not that... They're bloodshot. Really <laughs> they're really not. I mean, they're beautiful, but their eyes really aren't. It's their entire face. Exactly. Um, same thing could go for lips. And then somebody who you may not find is like, oh, this is the most perfect. They may just have beautiful eyes. So when mm -hmm. you get a specifics like that, um, it mm -hmm. changes. But oh, Yeah, because wow. I know someone said like, you know, years ago, uh, we could go back to Madge, the manicure. Right. Right. I mean, beautiful hands. Mm -hmm. So are there commercials that are just for hands, for nails? And sometimes oh, that's all that's seen even on camera. Absolutely. There's plenty of jobs that are um, just for hand models. There's hand models who specifically that's their entire career, um, mm -hmm. whether it's print or commercial. Uh, mm -hmm. They're jumping in and doing that. There's body models who are just doing body models. Um, mm. Much more prevalent in film when they're needing any kind of nudity or things, and we have somebody stand in and, mm -hmm. and do that. There's extras, there's OCTs, there's there's a wide variety of uh, types that are needed. Mm -hmm. Now, all the years that you have been doing this, has anything ever shocked you? I think we're shocked all the time. It's, it's less and less, but there's. Um, I think it's more surprise. I think we're. You know, we're always on the actor's side. We want them, we're hired on by our clients, but we want the actors to perform and always mm -hmm. do great. So I think it's more surprise when um, we're bringing somebody in and they just have grown and they're just blowing, and they're just like blowing the world away. They mm -hmm. just got it, they understand it, they're controlling it. So any advice out there for someone that's relatively new to the business, maybe just got an agent, just starting the audition process, anything you can give them a bit of advice? Um, educate yourself. Um, be comfortable walking in. Everybody is on your side, even though they may, they may not feel that way. Um, everybody wants you to succeed. Nobody. If I'm auditioning 30 people for a role, I want all 30 people to be fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, I want it difficult for my client to say, oh. Um, but a lot of people don't. They get nervous. They don't listen. They have problems um, comprehending what's going on because everybody communicates differently. Every director communicates differently and trying to understand and read between the lines comes with experience. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like hiring a good attorney. It's like you can go and have that conversation, they're gonna know the questions to ask mm -hmm. and you've gotta be able to answer those mm -hmm. if you're a good client. Now shooting a commercial, that takes basically how long? Someone told me a couple hours it could be shot, is that true? Oh, I've been, you're talking about many different types of commercials. So I've had- mm -hmm. Oh, so it could vary. I've had one roll commercials that have shot over five days because it's multiple locations and they're going all over the, be all over the world 
Mm -hmm. uh, some could be shot in an hour. We just mm -hmm. were doing a campaign that people were on set at noon and they were offset by three. Still getting paid the same amount of money. Um, mm -hmm. But sometimes they're there much longer. And I think it also, commercials can be quite lucrative if you're doing something on a national level, correct? It could be lucrative on a, a, a local level as well. You could be become a spokesperson for a, a product and it keeps running. Mm -hmm. Here it could be union or even non-union. There's projects out there that are paying. Yeah, because I know some people that have actually done They quit their day job. <laughs> they didn't have to. They're yeah. the spokesperson for this national brand. Yeah, and it's commercial after commercial. Oh, doing. Yeah. I, I, we, at the, on the same note, we've cast people in commercials that have been on the air for five, ten years. Mm -hmm. And campaigns, I, I've, I've cast some of the longest running campaigns that have been out there with performers that have been on there. like could be 15 years. So... Mm -hmm. They've done hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of commercials, absolutely. Now, an average commercial, uh, it, does it have like a lifespan? 13 weeks and then they decide if they want to renew it? Or... They, uh, it all depends on the spot and the product. And there's always, um, there's a lot of business that goes on behind the commercial world because, you know, the client has to okay the budget, then they have to buy the airtime mm -hmm. and they have to do all that. So there's a lot of business that goes mm -hmm. in. Sometimes we know up front how long it's going to run. Sometimes there's options for it. Um, you know, the union has their own rules for mm -hmm. renegotiating and, and putting it back up there. But there's no, you know, sometimes they run once. I've done Super Bowl commercials that they, they buried once. That's it. Mm -hmm. And they made $30 million. No, no the actor <laughs> didn't make a lot oh. of money at all. No, oh. no, no. Because it's definitely, on a lot of them, you're, if it's union-based, you're getting residuals. So right. If it airs once, it's not great, even though it's a massive audience. Mm -hmm. If it airs... So are you saying, like, the great. Super Bowl commercials when they are once? That's right. I never thought of that. Then you're not getting residuals. That's no, a one time shot. It's, it's pretty rare when they're just airing it once, but it does happen. It's, oh. a, it's a special gimmick or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's plenty of commercials that we're surprised that it's still running, it's still on the now, air. Are there any commercials that the person auditioned for, you cast it for, and they never even made it to the air? Does that ever happen? Oh, yeah. yeah they can. So it, it could, they could die in test markets or they get cut out of it. Sometimes we're getting, they're shooting multiple scenes for something and it's just not enough time. Mm -hmm. So I guess we're safe in saying it's a little bit of combination of luck, looks, talent, knowledge, like you said, experience, education, education, experience, and just like any other profession. I mean, if you're studying to be a doctor, you need to know your field. So you need to know this field as well to sort of be successful. Absolutely. Look at every audition as a job interview. Mm -hmm. You want to go in knowing that company. You want to go in knowing the employees that are there, the culture behind it. Otherwise, somebody else is going to step in there and get that job. From right. You. And even if you don't get the job, it's not the end of the world. No. I mean, it's mm -hmm. each one also, you can chalk it up to another learning Absolutely. experience. Hopefully you're learning from every audition. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And finally, I need to ask you, ask the pro, what do you think? Do I have it? There's always a chance. <laughs> There's always There's a chance. chance. Okay. It's, it's the strangest career that I don't, I have not been able to find another career that somebody could start after retirement and be as successful or more successful mm -hmm. at a career. Mm -hmm. The uh, beef lady years ago, remember Clara Peller? Clara Peller? Where's the beef for Wendy's? Everyone out there remembers that. I guess it played national. That was like in her 80s, and she yeah, that became was, a success. Yeah, that was Joe Saddlemeyer, yeah. who's out of Chicago. Yes, I yes. So that same thing. It's all ages. It's all sizes, all shapes. It's not like someone has to start themselves and be a size two because they can't be in this. Business. It's Correct. a variety. In other words, it's Absolutely. people. You're looking for people that are people. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You got it. You people being people. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah, we're, I mean, every shape, size, we never know what's coming through the door. We never know if that's something unique. We're looking for huge mountain men, like out of Game of Thrones right mm -hmm. now, and we're looking for smaller people, petite, for another role. It's always something different. So it's always an adventure. Every day.